Hey YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Those of you who are familiar with my channel will no doubt recognise the old Subaru 1800cc touring wagon. The one which served as the test vehicle for the Mark 1 Sunfoil. Back when all I was trying to do was uh, finish recharging the battery and I came to town and switched the engine off because I was at the journey's end. There was a Mark II 20 watt Sunfoil that went on my son's Brumby and I think this thing's been up here for about nine years and today I have a job for it. Though to be honest it has been hard at work for the whole two years that the vehicle's been sitting here ever since I punctured a tyre and didn't get around to taking the spare tyre into town and having it replaced and therefore I've been unwilling to drive the thing on the rocks just in case I got another flat tyre and didn't have one to replace it with on the day. So anyway, the charge controller says the Mark III Sunfoil has kept the battery full. And we can test this assertion by applying the multimeter. And we'll see what it says about the battery, what the Sunfoil's been doing to it. Uh, it says that it's looking very much like it's a full battery. Here we go, the charge controller says it just keeps taking it up there to about 13.5 or so and there's tree shadow on the panel so between the tree shadow dropping the voltage and the charge controller saying the battery's full, I think we can take it that the battery's full. Yahoo yippee, that's what you have a sunfoil for. And that's sort of handy dandy because the passenger side rear wheel is a bit soft and flat looking and the front passenger tyre, it looks really sad. So the plan is to use the sunfoil juice which has been stored in the lead acid accumulator to use the proper British tone of voice in an attempt without using any fossil fuels to restore the rotundity of the tyres on the old otherwise retired paddock basher. Okay, so I could use the late 1970s vintage Coleman Inflate All 90, which I am currently, I have been using that because I put it out to retirement probably 20 years ago. Um, everything else that I've had since has been failing, so that will work, but you do have to add oil to its foam rubber air filter in order to basically use the oil as a piston ring that was never manufactured in there. So there's that as an option. Here's one that's not an option because although it's got a wonderfully long cord and a pretty good long air hose too and the motor runs, the simple fact of the matter is it's got a very expensively manufactured epicyclic gearbox but up there at the top of the cylinder head there lurks an air leak in the plastic valve assembly that is beyond my ability to fix with epoxy and twine. So <clears throat> I replaced the old Coleman Inflate All 90 with this little device, which when it was new probably might have been capable of delivering its 250 pounds per square inch. And I think this one cost about $50 in about 2000, whereas I think that one probably cost about $100 or so back in 1978. However, this thing has come to the stage of its life wearing out the rubber that's supposed to grip the outside of your valve housing has been abraded away by many years of successful use, running up to 100 pounds per square inch, charging the airport firefighter. And here's another one that's not going to get used. This is the $25 special, which is pretty much the same but for some minor production engineering changes to cheapen it even further than the one from which I probably got 10 or 15 years work before reverting to the old man's Coleman Inflate All 90. So what are we going to do? This one needs a rest, this one's unfixable 
this one yeah well i suppose i could probably try and put the hose from it or rather the hose end from this one onto that one however we have a better option i think i'm going to use this first try out of my christmas present 2018 from my son and his girlfriend 20 litres per minute <coughs> at 15 pounds per square inch and 5 litres per minute at 140 pounds per square inch maybe it's 4, yeah, 4 litres per minute at 140 with a handy dandy we might have to wait 2 minutes while we blow up the tyres to 30 psi small car sort of thing and there's a cross reference for the tyre pressure gauge that's on the compressor I get to give the old man's tyre pressure gauge which runs from 18 psi all the way up to indeed 140 psi although I'll only be taking it up to 42 today all I can say at this point is yum Believe it or not, it even smells good. This really is quite a juicy little kit. And apparently in that little bag there, we have needles for inflating footballs and airbeds and balloons, etc. They have protective plastic over the lens on the gauge. Probably the only slightly disquieting factor is that this carry handle has a bit of slop to it, but you know, don't think that's going to actually make too much difference to the performance of the unit which has its own little rubber vibration isolation feet. Okay, here's the plan. Before I hook up the air compressor to the flat tire and switch the air compressor on at its little isolation switch at the bottom of the crankcase at this end, I'm gonna go and put the camera on a tripod over there, pointing at the wires coming off the battery and the multimeter. So you can see what happens when you put a load on the battery. Yeah, that changes the shape of things a little bit, doesn't it? Now let's see how much current we're actually drawing. Nine point one amps. Eleven point eight four. Nine point four nine amps. Getting their money's worth out of the battery anyway. Coming up through twenty psi, eleven point eight eight, and the sunlight starting to affect the screen on the multimeter. But the battery voltage is coming back up, eleven point nine two. Yeah, well, that's 11.91. Uh, sorry about the finger trouble on the pause button, but I'm going to go ahead with the video and not ditch it unless it's absolutely catastrophic. 40 pounds. Call that 42. 
11.9, 10 and a half amps. 44. And as you can see, the panel is in dappled shade. We'll be up to 45 clear side by now, so I'll let that sit there. And you can watch the bounce when I switch off. Yeah, fascinating, as is this. The air pipe is still hooked up to the tyre, and it's still holding its 46 PSI. So let's check old technology versus new technology. I don't know whether you're going to read that there. But uh, yeah, 46, there you go, 46, not 44, not 48. So the old man's tyre pressure gauge still works. And the new Christmas air compressor works exactly as advertised. After two years of sitting flat, the battery can pump out roughly 10 amps for uh, three, four minutes continuous hold it and have the voltage go down to 12.81 volts and then come back up under the influence of about half an amp worth of current which the mark three is able to generate despite that much shadow on the panel and despite all the dirt because i haven't washed the panel either it is still charging as it's eating it like it says. Okay, now we do the back dial. And it started off at about, pretty sure it was uh, 16 PSI, just slightly less <coughs> than enough to register on the 18 on the old. <coughs> Pulling 8.94 amps, 12.1 volts. And only 0.2 of an amp going in from the solar panel. By the way, we're talking 23 minutes past 3 in the afternoon. 11.94 at 325, 30 degrees, ground temperature over there. Coming up through 38 pounds per square inch. Fifty seven degrees on the motor, sixty degrees at the other end, forty three, fifty six, forty six, fifty nine on the bottom of the cylinder, sixty degrees. It's about Angled air outlet slots, 52 degrees at the bottom of the motor, 58.9 degrees at the bottom of the cylinder, rubber coating 57.9, 47.9, 42 psi, been running for about five minutes, 11.9. 11 amps. 11.89 volts. Sun foil is three quarters covered by cloud. 46 psi. And back to 12.3. 12.35. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12.3. 12
one minute after switching off 12.45 volts 0.04 of an amp coming out of the sunfoil with a cloud on the other side of the tree nothing on it 46 and this is 48 61.1 hasn't warbles had fun with his toys today christmas presents are made to be played with ciao